worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all thanks. You are worthy to be our God. So let's just take a moment and just put down all those things that are bothering us, the things that have already occurred to us, the things we've got to do later. I'm sure we've all got a to-do list. Some of these aren't as quiet as they used to be, are they? And let's just say, God, we just give all those things over because we want to give you your word. The grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father <coughs> and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We say together, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom the secrets are given, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may bear the good of you. And worthy magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to the Lord, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned. In thought, word, and deed, we, we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we sing the Gloria. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God. Servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, 
that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward, I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helped me, who will declare me guilty. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 116. The response is gracious is the Lord and righteous. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he inclined his ear to me on the day I called to him, the snares of death encompassed me, the pain of hell took hold of me, by grief and sorrow was I held. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beg you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. The Lord watches over the sinful. I was brought very low, and he saved me. Turn again to my rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been gracious to you. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Second reading is a letter of Prof. James. Not many of you shall become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with great strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. If we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guard their whole bodies. Or look at the ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creatures, can be tamed, and have been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue. A restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessings and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and blackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. This is the word of the Lord. So we stand to sing our next hymn, which is number five hundred and seventeen.
they answered him, John the Baptist and others, Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at the disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd of the disciples and said to them, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. <clears throat> for what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them, them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And I ask you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
or by being unwilling to say what we think, just in case we get it wrong. The disciples in our reading this morning had followed Jesus, followed Jesus originally knowing very little of who he was, probably only that he was different from anybody else they had ever met before in their life. And because of what they saw and heard, they knew he wasn't just different, but somehow so much more. And it's on the occasion of Jesus walking on the water that the penny begins to drop, and the disciples declare Jesus to be truly the Son of God, when they were overwhelmed by such an experience. And it's here we have the outworking of this insight in this tricky conversation, when Jesus asked them, who do people say that I am? He was giving them the opportunity to share the thoughts of local people on his identity. According to the disciples, some said that he was John the Baptist, others said Elijah, or one of the prophets. In other words, that he completely fits in with the early pattern of prophetic ministry by reliving it in the here and now. If you look at the same story in the Gospel of Matthew, one of the other prophets is named, and that's Jeremiah. <coughs> Whereas Elijah was widely expected to return as the forerunner of the Messiah, Jeremiah seems to be a different case. <coughs> Maybe he's mentioned in the Gospel because the whole story of Jeremiah follows the pattern of sadness and loss, followed by restoration and new life. <coughs> but when Jesus asked them a second question, one that would demand a more personal answer, it's Peter, who we often think of a bit of a loud man and a hothead who speaks up and offers a costly and risky answer to Jesus' question. He says, you are the Christ. It's not enough to know that other people, what other people say about Jesus. We must know, understand, and accept for ourselves that he is the Messiah. We must move from curiosity to commitment, from admiration to adoration. The moment Peter is willing to take the risk of saying this, of expressing his relationship with Jesus in these controversial terms, is the moment when he flags up both his faith in the mission of Jesus and his willingness to be involved. For Peter, Jesus is the Son of God, the King of Heaven who will bring his kingdom here on earth. This is the moment that Jesus declares to be a divine revelation. It's a heavenly revelation, translated into an earthly source, spoken by an ordinary follower, who was willing to risk being wrong rather than saying nothing at all. And it's this risk taking that qualifies his disciple to be the rock the foundation. Because God is a God of revelation to those who seek to know who he is and is always ready to identify with us. It also signals the start of a church, the beginning of a community enacting the purposes of heaven as heaven's agents here on earth. As followers of Jesus, we too are called to answer these two questions in our walk with him. Let's be honest, most of us would find it easier to answer the question, who do people say that I am? As there's always those who are willing to give a variety of answers, as opinions on the identity of Jesus are often right. We hear it, don't we, too often people <coughs> say he's just a moral man who expounds a philosophy. Maybe he's someone that our grandmas believed in. Isn't Jesus the one you go to when you're in a bit of trouble? A crutch for the weak-minded? Or even a baby in a manger who we celebrate at Christmas? I'm sure if you ask people on the street, there'd be far more other definitions of who they think Jesus is. <coughs> or maybe if we're honest, there might be far more definitions in this room of who we think Jesus is. But it will it but it will only be in the answering the second question of speakers of the truth that those brave enough to answer the question, who do you say that I am? That will not only find his true identity, but
the doors that were our own. As sons and daughters of a king and heirs of a kingdom. Jesus invites us to recognise his true God-filled identity and respond to it as Peter did. Recognising that Jesus transforms us and brings clarity to our own identity and our calling. Did you hear that? When we identify who Jesus truly is, our true identity is confirmed and our calling is given. Not only will we know who we are, but what we are called to do. Last weekend I was on a conference up in Glasgow and one of the speakers got up, very quietly spoken, and he was talking about who we are in Jesus. And how often we're not sure who we are. And we listen to what the enemy says about us. He often says, not yet. You might be a follower of Jesus, but don't really think yet. Go on a different course. Go and join a group. Read another book. But don't do it yet. You're not ready. Not yet. Or he says to us, you're followers of Jesus, but not you. Somebody else has probably been called to do that, not you. A bit like, who do you think you are? That question, isn't it? That God would call you to do something. And I thought the final thing he said, he said three things. The final one was, and not at your age. To the young, he says, good, breathe your feet down the cup. older. Well, you're a bit too old now. You've missed your chance. You can't possibly do anything. I wonder if you've heard that when you've been seeking after God and you've really wanted to seek his face and yet you've heard in your head, not me. Give it a bit longer. Not me. Somebody else will do it. And not at your age. He said a lovely thing about not at your age. He said, the best wine comes at the end. When you think that Jesus made that wine, and when he poured it out, the best came at the end in the celebration. Being mature is not an excuse to not get on with it. It's just something said by the enemy to stop us doing it. <coughs> Peter said, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ. You are the Lord, the Saviour. And when we say that as followers, we not only just identify Jesus, but we identify who we are in him. Sons and daughters, heirs of a kingdom, people called to go out and tell others. Peter is called the rock. Now, if I was choosing somebody to base my company on, I would definitely not have chosen Peter. Because he is known as the loud mouth, the one who's quick to jump in to put his foot in it. But Jesus sees our heart. And I think Jesus is saying, absolutely now. Go for it. If you hear a call on your life, do it. I am calling you for a time of just like this. There is no one who can do the thing that I have called you to do. That is a unique calling. It's got nothing to do with age or whatever. I don't make mistakes. Absolutely you. And absolutely at this time of your life. Because God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't bring us to this world to disappoint us, to say you're my children, but actually I don't want you to be my heirs. Jesus calls each one of us today because he has given us an identity as the people of God. And I always wonder what would happen if we lived in that identity. It's a big prayer, isn't it? 
walking down the floor then. When I was down in uh, at St John's, I said to you, it's easy for me, isn't it? I'm standing here with a bit of plastic around my neck, you know, when we talk about calling. But actually, I don't know. What is my calling? We can still kind of think that we know what it is. Or we can seek safety behind something. But that's what God's saying to us this morning. You are my children. You are heirs of my kingdom. And I have a calling for you. And you see, you don't get to get out of jail time because you've got the plastic on. So let's pray. Thank you that we know that you, Jesus, are the Messiah. That when Peter said it, he didn't know what was going to happen. In fact, he told you that what you were going to do was all wrong, and you had to tell him that what you were going to do was all right. And we live in the knowledge of the cross. That we know that you are our Lord. Saviour and that you are risen and that you call us to build your kingdom here in Methley on earth and that everyone is on your list everyone is on your team because we are the body of Christ here and now in this So Lord, to whom our calling, as you have confirmed our identity, and give us the courage to know it's absolutely now, it is me, and it is this time in my life. Amen. Father God, we give thanks for this place where so many have prayed, so many have come and worshipped you. We thank you that your message and your mission has 
have to be going on for so long. Forgive us when we have become weary of being those who tell others about you. Forgive us when we look to others to do the job. Forgive us when we're afraid. Help us to see you more clearly as our God and as our King, as our Lord and our Saviour who goes with us. And help us to be the people who continue to tell those around us about you. Pray for our friends, our family, our work colleagues, and our neighbours. And we pray for this community. May this building be a beacon to you, but may your people be those who go out from this place with the gospel of love. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, we pray for those who are struggling at this time with their identity, for those who feel undervalued, who are anxious, who are alone, for those who don't know that they are loved. We pray for those who seek out their identity in the wrong place and in the wrong places. Lord, just make your love known to each one. May they know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, that they are loved, and that they are created in your image. Do this to those people who need to hear the words of love and reassurance of peace and compassion and mercy. May we be open to your prompting, Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those who are sick at this time and struggling with illness. We ask that you would bring your healing touch upon them, mind, body, and spirit. <coughs> we pray for those we know. And we give thanks that all are known to you. We pray for those who minister healing for our NHS, for our hospitals, for our doctors, for all those who seek to bring healing and relief. Lord, in your mercy. we see around us, even when it's pouring with rain, Lord, you bring the rain down. And to do this harvest time, we thank you for the rain, for the flowers, for the trees, for the fruit, for all that grows in your wonderful world. Help us be those who value all that you've given us and protect it. Lord, in your mercy. And that 
quite a lot going on. Not only was the coffee morning a success, but we had a very successful morning as part of our presence in the Heritage Open Weekends. Our connection with the free company, the Towton Reenactment Group, who linked to one of the monuments in our chapel, had the best turnout ever. Uh, and they brought with them a, a, a good number of visitors, families. Stuart was running up and down the tower like a young church warden, weren't he, Stuart? Um, but, and incidentally, towards church funds, only yesterday we counted about £130. So not only is it a good thing to do, but it's helping church funds. That was Heritage Open Day. Um, we are still in creation tide, and last uh, Sunday I set out a selection of fair trade goods to focus on that, that being one small thing that we can do uh, as part of our calling. Uh, they are for sale, and also I will take orders. If you took a bottle last week and you decided it's ready for another one, you can always place an order on the clipboard, which is there now, or see me for change. Um, I'd like to mention one other thing that uh, you can help in a very, very small way. We've now got a new box for the collection of used postage stamps at, on the pew at the back of the church. If, like me, you don't get very many envelopes with stamps on these days, you probably will at Christmas. Um, we've collected for a number of years, thanks to Joyce Fibers' connection with the leprosy uh, fund. But they are no longer taking stamps, so I asked Dr. Anne what we should change to, and she said, let's collect for the blind, which is very appropriate because we know that Peter Whitfield is struggling with his sight. So if you see stamps on the post that come in, cut them off, snip them up with about a centimetre around, and pop them in the box at the back. It does raise funds for the blind. And then finally, we've got a number of things going on in this part of the church. We've got a lot of our treasures set out, and if you didn't get to either of the open days, we'd like to see some of our historic items, they will be there. And last thing, as part of our eco-church planning for creation type, John has come up with a wonderful scheme with a little activity that you, your children, your grandchildren might like to take part in. So John, would you come up and explain?
sort of um, small, I mean, it's a very simple type of thing you can do, um, which is, is a big advantage for me. Um, and it's, it's really a celebration of, of the seasons, in a sense. I mean, it's sort of nature in a sort of microcosm, in a frame. And it's, it's something that um, uh, you can actually use together with uh, the, the pew sheet. Because if you look at the pew sheet, on it, there is um, a picture of St. Oswald. There's often a picture of the church saying, uh, you're welcome here. And also there's a Methodist parish prayer. And it's a way of incorporating that in... Uh, <coughs> Something I've, I've done earlier. And it, it simply is, it's using um, a box frame. It doesn't have to be a box frame, it helps if it's a box frame because it's slightly recessed. <coughs> and what I've done here, um, I've got some felt backing, you can have any sort of card backing, like a sort of, like a sort of coloured backing that goes in the back of the frame. And then Cut out on the pew sheet, the monthly parish prayer, and uh, uh, I'm not, I'm no expert on flowers, but it's a flower from the main garden. So I don't know what it is. But it, it's, it goes on the front. If you put it up like a, a double sided adhesive pad in the glass, and then once, once if the flower is nice and dry, you press the flower onto the pad, and it stays there at least for the duration. It looks, it looks uh, quite good together with it with the parish prayer. And the other, the other two are, again, there's, this is actually another recessed frame, and it's, there's the picture of the church, says, you're welcome here, again, uh, uh, like a double-sided sellotape pattern you can get from Hobby Craft or anywhere, and it's not a flower, and again, I don't know what this one is. <laughs> But it's given to me when they, I plant them. It's grown, so I, I must be doing a good job. And it just goes in, in the frame like that. And again, and again, it's got that, like a sort of felt or a, a card backing which changes the colour of the frame. And the last one, the last one is <coughs> the same, basically the same idea. There's some nozzles in the in the top left corner there, and very something out of the garden. Then there's some stickers there, some stickers at, at Hobby Craft of insects and butterflies and various things. You can stick one of these. There's a leaf, obviously, changing the seasons. There's a brown leaf. And there are fuchsias there, I think. And some dried berries. And then a few, few butterflies in the background. And it's, it's very simple, very straightforward. But it is, in a sense, a little bit of nature, a little bit of the outside of the garden or the churchyard in a frame. love to see what you or your family have been able to put into the frame as part of our celebration of God's creation and of the church. One thing that's on the view sheet where it says see Peter, I am to remind you that we have got our uh, harvest supper coming up on the, make sure I get the date right, Saturday the 5th is the date of October from 7 o'clock. The tickets will be available from next Sunday but spread the word We'd love to have a lovely gathering with people from church and the community in St. Margaret's Hall. Thank you. Messy church. Messy church. He's on this afternoon from 3.30 in St. Margaret's Hall. And Emma and the team would be very grateful for anybody who could sit at the table and help. Thank you. Thank you. I going now? Church of England organisation across the country um, looking at um, sustainability in flowers that we use in church, uh, trying to use British flowers, not imported flowers, and thinking about the environment uh, in the flowers that we use. 
We've been at Harrogate Flower Show for the last couple of days, and I'm, I'm going back this afternoon uh, with a stand, with a lovely stand, and we've had lots and lots of visitors. We are part of a competition, an interflora competition, uh, that is, is to win an award, a sustainability award, which is a national competition. So um, lots of people have been coming, lots of people have been voting, but just to let you know what's happening, we may not win, but it is, it is the taking part, it really, it really is, but it, it's, it's raised the profile of, of sustainable flowers in churches, so good thing to be involved in, I think. Remain. 